The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the ABS Evening News for today, Thursday, 24 September 2020. I'm R. Anderson Edgel. Well, now to this major developments tonight. Antigua and Barbuda now has a third active case of COVID-19. Confirmation came during Thursday's post-cabinet media briefing. All three active cases are non-imported and health officials have intensified contact tracing. Meanwhile, there is another crucial reminder from health officials for everyone to adhere to protocols aimed at preventing the spread of COVID-19. The advice comes from the acting chief medical officer, Dr. Terrian Joseph, as Sherilyn Beza reports. Dr. Joseph highlights the proper use of face masks using this analogy. Let's just say perhaps you're in the cold and you're to wear gloves to protect your hands yeah, from getting cold, your fingers, and frostbite. What if we were to cut all the areas for your fingers out and leave them out? You haven't protected your fingers. It's the same with your face mask. You are to cover your nose. She says in not doing so, one is not protecting themselves and others. Dr. Joseph says as social beings, we now have to do so at safe distances. And it said six feet is enough. And if you can't imagine what six feet would look like, Think about two arms length, and that is about six feet. The acting CMO says it's understood that wearing a mask and social distancing can be uncomfortable, but asks the populace to weigh the risks of not doing so. She encourages residents to strengthen their immune systems to be better able to fight infections. These include eating healthy foods, avoiding alcohol and tobacco, taking vitamins, exercising, and getting adequate rest. Dr. Joseph says staying home is key, especially for the elderly and those in self-quarantine. Stay home, stay home, and in dialect tapu, just stay home. You don't need to go to the supermarket, have someone do that for you, but just stay home for your own good, for the good of the people you love, and for the good of the country. Cheryl Inbeza reporting for ABS News. Well, meanwhile, some staffers at ABS TV Radio have been required to self-isolate after a team member tested positive for COVID-19. The management of the public broadcaster has assured all protocols instituted by the Ministry of Health are being followed as it continues to ensure the safety of all staffers. The measures are being taken out of an abundance of caution though there is confidence that routine safety protocols have curtailed any exposure. Measures being taken include additional sanitization. Meanwhile, the management of the broadcaster says the development could affect some scheduled programs, but says the safety of all concerned is paramount. Well, the government's quarantine facility at Hawksbill will soon no longer be an option for returning nationals. The confirmation came from the Minister of Information, the Honorable Melford Nicholas, while addressing reporters during Thursday's post-cabinet media briefing. The management of Hawksbill has always indicated that uh, they would want to make the facilities that they have uh, to put them back in the, the normal tourism pool and so that they would want to be able to uh, return to a situation of offering their facilities to tourists. Well, Minister Nicholas says discussions are on the way regarding the new location of the government's quarantine facility once Hawksville Hotel has been surrendered to the owners. Health Minister the Honorable Malwin Joseph has indicated the old U.S. Naval base is a possible location. There are barracks there in which uh, the minister has indicated that there needs to be some renovation. There need to be some additional facilities um, implemented to it, uh, uh, standby generators and uh, improve water supply. And an estimated U.S. $130 daily per national under government quarantine. Well, there has been an overall improvement in performance by students in Antigua and Barbuda in this year's Caribbean Secondary Ex Education Certificate or CSEC examinations. That's the assessment from the preliminary results released this week. ABS's Sherilyn Beezer breaks down the numbers which officials caution are subject to change based on reviews. Local CXC Registrar Marek Smith 
says there was an 8% increase in the number of students sitting CSEC with 2,273 this year compared to 2,107 last year. Based on the preliminary results, subject passes also saw an increase with a 75.8 overall percentage pass this year compared to 73.9% in 2019. Smith says of 32 subject areas, there was an improvement in performance in 21 compared with last year. The local CXC registrar says it's not possible to name the top student since grades are still pending in English literature and social studies. One candidate, I'm not going to name that at this point, who did 18 subjects and got 14 grade ones, three twos, and a five. There's another candidate who did 21 subjects, 14 grade ones, six twos, and one ungraded, which is the English B. The third contender did um, 17 subjects with 14 grade ones, two grade twos, and the English B being ungraded. CAPE examinations saw 577 candidates sitting the exam, compared to 553 in 2019. The overall percentage pass of 83.8% is a decline from 2019 with 88%. Two schools, Trinity Academy and All Saints Secondary, entered candidates in the CCSLC, where results are given in three levels, with the highest being mastery, then competency and developing competency. In English, there were 15 candidates with one receiving mastery, 13 competency and one developing competency. Math had 29 candidates with three mastery, 24 competency and two developing competency. Spanish saw 10 candidates with one gaining mastery, eight competency and one developing competency. Education Director Claire Brown sought to allay concerns that if students had sat the longer paper, they might have had better grades. Looking at the, the results for the last two years, 2018 and 2019, CXC, the Technical Advisory Committee, TAC, would have pulled out the paper two. And when they pulled out the paper twos, what they recognized is that the performance this year was consistent with the performance in the two years previous. Education Minister Honorable Michael Brown also joined in congratulating the students. For the exceptional performance uh, that they would have done at a very critical time. And so I want to congratulate them for the excellent work that they have put in. He applauded Sir McChesney George with a tremendous increase in overall passes, 70.7%, and Irene B. Williams's leap in performance. The Education Minister also commended Princess Margaret and Clare Hall School for their overall 5% increase. Cheryl Inbees reporting for ABS News. Well, now to this, the Magistrates' Code of Procedures Amendment Bill 2020 was passed in Parliament's lower house today with sundry amendments. ABS's Jessica Russell covered the proceedings. The Magistrates' Code of Procedures Amendment Bill of 2020 will extend the jurisdiction of magistrates in civil matters. Attorney General and Member of Parliament for St. John City South piloted the bill. We have noted that the magistrates are now competent, have always been, but are even now more so than before. And Mr. Speaker, they can handle matters of claims up to $25,000. That's what this amendment is seeking to do. He says the current law has created a backlog of cases at the High Court. What it means there for Mr. Speaker that any claims above 7,005 would have to be referred to the High Court. We have limited High Court judges. They have so many things to deal with. A claim which ought properly to have been settled within 90 days take three years. He says the new amendment will allow for the expeditious execution of justice. We've got five magistrates. And once the work has been properly allocated by the clerk, the managing clerk in the court, people's cases will be dispensed with, I can guarantee you, within 90 days, three months. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Well, meanwhile, Attorney General Stedroy Benjamin has defended the integrity of magistrates while presenting the Magistrates' Code of Procedures Amendment Bill. This comes a week after Member of Parliament for St. Peter, Asset Michael, asked Chief Magistrate Joanne Walsh 
to recuse herself from hearing a civil case involving him. That this Attorney General fully supports the magistracy, all of the magistrates, all of them, from the Chief Magistrate right down, they do their work fearlessly, justly, and no matter who you are or what position that you hold, you are subject to the law. Well, the Attorney General says magistrates hold everyone to the law equally. All of the magistrates have integrity, independence, are well learned, skilled, and are not open to influence by any person or bodies or institutions except the law. Well, the MP for St. Peter has since apologized to the Chief Magistrate over comments made by him and on his behalf. Well, coming up after the break, we'll take a look at the sports report. The headline there, FIFA suspends Trinidad and Tobago Football Association. Joel Rain will tell us more about that story when we get back from the break. At Najiko, 